I'm Red Farmer. I'm fixing to take you a few laps around some of my old racetracks. And we're going to start off with Talladega, which is one of my hometown tracks, and uh, give you a couple laps around there. We'll talk about some things that happened uh, at that track for me. Red Farmer holding off. Brad Adcock. Here they come. Yes, Marvin Harrison holding off. Brad Adcock holding off. Here Well, one thing, it's, a, it's the biggest racetrack that you run on. It's 2.66 miles an hour, which is bigger than Daytona. So it's a, probably the world's fastest racetrack in its size. So it, it, it's, it really puts on some races down here. Uh, back when I ran the car, we didn't have the setups that they got now with these bump stop system and soft springs and, and all that stuff. We ran the regular old school springs. You know, our, our, my spring car had it uh, something like a 3,000 pound right front and a 2,000 pound left front, a pair of 500 to 600 pound rear springs in the cars. They're real stiff, but uh, you, you can feel every little bump on the racetrack. You come down this back straight away, you gotta you get out of here right next to the wall, as close as you can. If you go down this thing wide open, and then when you get down here to turn three, you've got to make the right angle to get in there to get on the bottom lane. So, peel off there and there and get down there right on that yellow line. right on the other line because it makes the track the smallest. So you want to try to run right down on that yellow line <coughs> and keep it there. So, so that's the way you get around Talladega. Because well, I've been very fortunate in Talladega. I won two ARCA race 500s here in 84 and 88. In 88, what made that car race special in my hometown track, my crew chief was Davey Allison. I was driving Davey's car in that particular race in 88 that I won. And uh, Davey was in my pit with the helmet on, calling the shot and stuff. So. To get him this win, you know, we know he don't have a whole lot of time left with his career, and he's been helping me out quite a, quite a bit, you know, and it's just a terrific thrill to do this for him. That made it real special. And in uh, 74, I finished fourth in the Talladega 500 with uh, my old Torino that I built in the backyard. Real happy with that. Uh, one thing about that race was uh, my buddy Bobby, Bobby Allison finished third, and I finished fourth in that race, so I'll always remember that. Uh, we'll probably take you down now and to some other race tracks. We'll go to a couple more of the tracks that I ran back in the days and uh, take you a few laps around them too. Well, we're at Nashville now. I may call this my hometown track because I was born about one mile from this racetrack. Right up the end of Wedgwood Drive is where I was born and raised at the here Nashville track. But I never ran it when I was living here because I moved away when I was about 14 years old. But I come back many years later and ran this track. And uh, it's been a real good track to me. I won a, lot, I won a Nashville 300 on it. I won a two or 300 lap ARCA race here. And won a lot few of the short track races, you know. Uh, so it's actually one of my favorite tracks to run. We'll make a little lap around there and see what, what it feels like. Fairgrounds in Nashville bring back a lot of memories. Made a many a lap on this racetrack. Uh, I ran an ARCA race here. I won an enduro race here one year to start 150-something cars on this track. 
and uh, I won it up here uh, driving a Monte Carlo that I built. So it's been a real good track for me. I like it. So we'll make a few laps around here, you know. It's a, it's a good racetrack. Put on some fine races at this racetrack. We got real close to the wall that time, didn't it? I don't know. I ran it back. I ran it probably 1960, 61, right up through there. Because I come up here with, with my 36 coupe and ran it, and I destroyed it on this racetrack. Uh, I got there's a lot of pictures of it up here where I crashed. The, the track used to be a lot higher bank than it is now. You people don't realize it, but this track here used to be real high bank. I tell you how by how this track was banked so much when we went through three and four we couldn't see around the corners we cut holes in the roof and put a, about the opening about as big as a, a license t uh, plate right above our head so we could see around the corner it was so corner when you go through there you could see the roof but you couldn't even hardly see the uh, uh, anything else it was real bank it was super fast but I wiped out by 36 and I come up from Florida and on this racetrack. And, uh, but I came back many years later to other tracks and enjoyed running it. So, <laughs> I guess I might as well call this my hometown track since I was born right up the street from it. pushing the front end coming off the corner. Right here, right here, when I come through this dog lay here, Terry Bach hit me in the gas, turned me sideways right here. And I went down there and I hit this road course and it started flipping. And that's when I flipped about 18 times. And when I stopped, I was way down there and turned one. Well, we're at Daytona now, and uh, gonna make a few laps around this racetrack. Uh, I started Daytona, the first race I ran at Daytona was in 1953, but it was on the beach course. I drove a Hudson down there in uh, 1953, and uh, ran that beach course, and I ran the last race on the beach course that they had in 58, and uh, that was quite a race in 58. Glenn uh, Wood said uh, had the fastest time, but Banjo won it. Glenn ran third. Fireball Roberts was fourth. Ned Jarrett was tenth, and I was fourteenth. They started seventy-two cars in it, so I ran that racetrack for for many years. I ran Arca, the Sportsman, and some of the Cup races too. My best finish was when I. And in 71 when I won the Permatex 300 on this racetrack. So Daytona's been a good one for me. We've gone every year. Uh, this is the first year that actually I've missed going to Daytona since that I started going there. So I've been there every year since then, but uh, the COVID doesn't got the bunch of us. So maybe we get to go next year. Well, we're in the old hometown of Daytona. This Daytona is a little bit more trickier to drive than Talladega is. Talladega is a little higher bank. You got more straight down force. This one here, you got a little bit more side force on it. So it's a little bit different to drive, but it's still the same way. The fastest round around this racetrack is right on the yellow line. Of course, when they get running and they get single file, they the draft they can go where they want to, but. Uh, 
They always try to run this track, uh, if they can, on the bottom lane. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't like it. Now, they, 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 this new setup they've got nowadays, they put them on the floorboard lifting. When we ran it a little bit, uh, uh, we didn't have a restrictor plates on them. And, you know, it, it was a different type of deal. But, uh, <laughs> when they got the restrictor plates on it, it changed the whole thing to an aero package now. The, uh, it's aero package and they put it on the floor and leave it there and uh, the setup that they run now with these bump stops and frame setup and everything they've got now and aero package they got in the cars they could do it but when we ran back there with 3,500 pound springs they're running 250 pound springs now on bump stops but <laughs> I've never driven one like they've got nowadays so I, I can't really tell you how that is but to me as solid as they got those cars, to me, it feel like, looking at them, they, that's the reason they had to put lights in the dash for changing the gauges because <laughs> the track is so rough and so fast, it feels like you're sitting on a creeper and somebody pushes you down a flight of stairs. And your eyeballs can't keep up with the gauges. So now they got it where if it gets to a certain temperature and change colors, and they don't even got to try to read the dials. So, Everything's changed on it and, uh, from what we ran back in the years ago. But I still love this old racetrack. Like I said, you can put it on the floor, put it right on there. When you get ready to qualify, especially, you want to get right on that yellow line all the way around the racetrack. And uh, even through the dog leg. So. That's it here. Same old Daytona. It'll get your attention. And that boy, it'll take a lot of lap time to get used to these things, I tell you that. Yeah. I, I watched a lot of the IROT races, you know, and some of them, you know, and I didn't know how tough it was, but uh, a lot of them said, said man, you gotta have a lot of hours in, in one of these cars. And uh, I know that. They were different ones, like I know uh, Jeff Gordon Holm says, I just ain't got, I ain't got the time to put in the hours it takes to be able to win races in the IROC. And so, well, you know it yourself, don't you? I, I didn't realize how tough it was to be able to run one of these things. Because I watched them run, you know, and I've seen Hill and all of them run a lot like that, but uh, I can see I can see now what what they going through. So. I'll tell you about that wreck I had in Martinsville. When I hit that wall wide open with that 420, 427 big block Chevy and that thing was coming down that back right away and then follow hung and I hit that wall and come to find out the stud that was held the air cleaner on broke and fell down and hold the, held the butterflies open. Fell down in the carburetor. That's what they told me later. All right, folks, we're at Martinsville, one of my old play, playgrounds up here. Uh, I never, never won a race here. I had some pretty good finishes up here, but they had some great drivers up here in the modified sportsman that I ran. Ray Hendricks and uh, Paul Radford and, and a bunch of them, you know, up here. Uh, I guess probably the best I ever ran here was I drove a fellow from Bassett, Virginia, only about 15 miles from here, 
uh, William Mason's car. In fact, he owned the car that Perk Brown drove, black, number four, black and white number 45. So William Mason put some fine cars out on this racetrack. So I tell you, I told him, I said, you know, this Martinville is really a, a tricky racetrack. And to really get around here fast, I told him, I said, what you need to get around Martinville fast is a dragster with air brakes. Now, if you had a dragster with air brakes to go down this straightaway and slam on the brakes to get through the corner, you'd have a fast race car. This truck was tough on brakes, that's for sure, because you got a big old heavy race car going into these sharp, flat turns, and it's like a, like a, like I said, they, they, they call this the hairpin turn. Uh, the, you run down here, like I said, but you got to get off of it, and you really kind of stand on the brakes pretty good to get through the corners, and uh, you stay right on that bottom corner, and then you come off that corner and get back in that throttle and go down that straightaway like a dragster. And then you got to get off of it hard enough, slow enough so that you make the corner. And uh, take it around through that corner like that and get back in the throttle hard again down the straightaway. But you got to know when to get off. You don't get in too deep like I did then. I just got it over my head there. So, that's why the track is always, it'll get your attention. Yeah, I'm all clear while I'm ahead. But I tell you, this old Martinsville track has been a good one. They had some awful good drivers were in Martinsville all the time. And it's modified division up here. So I know I raced with Glenn Wood up in this racetrack years ago. So there's some great drivers come out of the Martinsville area from out of the Virginia to run this track all the time. So my hat's off to them. Well, folks, we're going to leave it with you. I hope y'all enjoyed it. some of the trips down memory lane from these old racetracks. I know I, it brings back a lot of memories to me. Uh, I had some great many laps on these racetracks. And uh, Daytona, Talladega, Martinsville, Nashville, they were all some, some of my favorite racetracks. So, Maybe we'll see you down the road. So, I'm gonna have to get some more practice to learn how to drive these things, I'll tell you that though. My hat's off to these guys that run this series. So it's a tough deal. I can see where it takes many hours of practice to be able to be competitive in this, this circuit. Thanks for watching.